Pinalakas ng hangaring makapagpatayo ng isang makabagong silid aklatan para sa mga Del Pilarians. Hango sa walang humpay na diwa ng alumnus na ang pamana ay nakaukit na sa pangalang kilala ang aklatan ngayon. Ang aklatang Gabriel A. Bernardo, silid aklatan ng MHP NHS, inihahandog ang isang mahusay na silid aklatan sa serbisyo ng isang mahusay na paaralan at pamayanan. Sa pagpasok mo sa bulwagan, Sasalubong sa iyo ang counter, tagapangasiwa at tagapag-ingat ng sandaigdigan ng kaalaman. Humakbang ng kaunti, isang guwang na silid ang matatagpuan, Delphi Commons. Naglalaman nito na makayamanan sa pag-aaral na nagsisilbing gabay sa pagtuturo na eksklusibo para sa mga guru. Sa tabi naman ng pasilyo, Matatagpuan ang saliksikan. Ito ang nagsisilbing repositoryo ng pananaliksik at ng mga elektronikong kagamitan. Dito na rin matatagpuan ang DOST Starbucks, pasilidad para sa mga mag-aaral na nagnanais magsimula ng akademikong pananaliksik. Bagamat sa grado ang bulwagan, nasa puso naman ng silid aklatan ang sentro para sa pagbabasa. Lahat dito ay tinatanggap, malaki man o maliit. Isa itong tagpuan kung saan nagtatagpo ang mga matatalas na isipan at nagpapalitan na maediya. Okupado, ito ay magiging. Ang pulpito ay para sa mga mangaral. Ang entablado ay para sa mga nagpapakadalubhasa. Sa harapang bahagi ng aklatan, sasalubong sa iyo ang isang handanan na siya rin tanghalan. Dito maaaring umupo at magbasa o di kaya ipahayag ang mga kaisipan. Sa kaliwang bahagi, isang silid ang namamalagi, silid Plaridel kung tawagin, katipunan ng hindi matatawarang kasulatan, Filipiniana at kasaysayan ng paaralan. Kahati ng silid ay makabagong pasilidad panradyo at panbidyo upang itaguyod ang kalidad na edukasyon para sa mga kabataan at lipunan. Media Arts Center ang bagong bulwagan ng karunungan ng pambansang mataas na paaralang Marcelo H. Del Pilar. Sa mundo ng mga hangarin, tayo ay lalampas at maguhubog ng mga imanasyon patungo sa isang kabagayang tunay. Ang ating hinangad na silid aklatan at espasyong tinuro ay isang katawang ating maitatanghal bilang katagumpayan. Katulad nga ng laging binabanggit, sa likod ng bawat kahangahangang paaralan ay isang kahangahangang silid aklatan. Acuña. Present. Andrada. Present. Cabal. Present. Cagno. Present. Garcia. Present. Hernandez. Present. Jimenez. Present. Mo. Present. Rosario. Present. Sintin. Present. 
Watson. Tirsen. Valdez. <laughs> Present. Words back. Present. Zuniga. Present. Magandang buhay, senior high school students! Welcome to another fun and exciting discussion in the world of contemporary art for the school year 2021-2022. In Tele Radio Marcelo, ang telearalan ng bawat malulengyo. I'm Sir J.B. Perez, your CPAR teacher for today. So as we start this session, I am expecting that all of you are excited especially in discovering new uh, knowledge in the world of contemporary arts. For today's lesson, we will discuss about the various contemporary arts in the Philippines. But before we start, let's have a short review. So in our previous lesson, you understand the meaning of the word contemporary art. You also discover uh, the art forms that can be found in the Philippines as well as the indigenous materials being used in creating some of their artworks or products. But before we proceed to our lesson, so let's have a short activity. So I'm going to do, what we're going to do is to choose the best answer in the uh, choices. So I will repeat the questions twice. So let's start. So question number one. So it, uh, this is the earliest and the most basic form of communication. Question number one. This is one of the earliest and the most basic form of communication. So kung alam nyo yung sagot, paki-type or paki-message yung comment nyo or yung sagot ninyo sa comment section. So the choices are contemporary art, letter A, letter B, art, letter C, painting, Letter D, visual art. So question number one. This is one of the earliest and the most basic form of communication. So hintayin natin yung mga sagot from our students, our grade 12 students. Okay, from Julia Magbitang, so his answer is letter B. So the right answer is letter B, correct? Very good. Next, 
Question number two. Where do poetry, prose, and drama belong as a form of art? Where do poetry, prose, and drama belongs as an art form? Letter A, integrative. B, performing. Letter C, visual. Or letter D, literary. So, hintay tayo ng answers from our grade 12 students. So, from Isabella Aguinaldo, so her answer is letter D, literary. So, the right answer is letter D. That's correct. Very good. Next question. Question number three, defined as a language of visual signs that conveys ideas, feelings, or moods. Defined as a language of visual signs that conveys ideas, feelings, or moods. So the choices are visual art, B, performing art, C, literary art, D, fine art. So, maghintay tayo ng answer. So, according to say, Coronel, her answer is letter A. So, the right answer is correct. So, letter A, visual art. Last two questions before we start our lesson. Question number four, which of the following best describes contemporary art? Letter A, it is the art of the past, art in the past. Letter B, it is traditional art. Letter C, it is religious art. And letter D, it is the art of the present. So from... Raynon, Junishu. So his or her answer is letter D. So it is the part, uh, this is the art of the present. Oh, very good. Good job, Del Pilarians. So to understand the art forms, we must understand the roots of Philippine art. Let's look up to the art of the history of our country to understand and know the influences of our rich culture. So tara na, tuklasin ang ating sining, tara na at lakbayin ang sariling ating. So let's talk about development of Philippine art. When we say development, it is the process of how things or place changes from time to time. So just like fashion, technology, and the thing we use in our daily living, masabi natin na nagbabago ito sa from time to time. So, so let's talk about the Philippine art. So what is Philippine art? Philippine art refers to the work of art that developed since the beginning of civilization in the Philippines up to the present era. It also reflects to the society with wide range of diverse culture influences and how it hunt the culture and the art of the country. Meron tayong tinatawag na ethnic traditions or katutubong traditions. In this tradition, we have a lot of, uh, lot of art forms like performances, 
rituals that can be uh, considered as a part of literary and visual. Also, meron din tayong mga art products or art uh, uh, artwork na may consider natin na tools that they use in their daily living like fishing, hunting, that we consider as applied art. So when we say applied art, it is a classification of art that intended for utilization purposes. For example, uh, mga kagamitan na pang araw-araw nilang ginagamit. Not for decoration, not for uh, beautification, it is intended for application. Philippines already have its indigenous art. These art forms are influenced by geographical location in the experiences of the uh, of our ancestors. So they develop tools that they can be used sa pangangaso, pangingisda, sa pagtatanim, at even sa pagkain. So let's proceed to our next uh, slide. So pre-colonial art period from 16,185 BC to 1520 AD. So in this period, these are the sum of a notable art piece or artwork during this period. During this period, local communities are being established and start to go beyond mere crafts. For example, stone weapons or jewelries and start to have decorative elements, meanings, and context. So the first one, the first example is the Old Stone Age. So from 16,000 BC to 8. 1000 BC. So it is the uh, it is the proof of the earliest man's presence was recovered in a ranch site in Cagayan Province. So itong dalawang uh, uh, batong ito or stone is dated about nine million years ago. Ginagamit daw nila ito uh, yung mga patalim na bato na ito bilang weapons and hunting tools. The second one is the Angona petroglyphs known as the oldest work of art in the Philippines located in the province of Rizal. So there are 120 human and animal figures engraved on the rock wall probably carved during 3000 BC. So when we say petroglyphs, ito yung mga artworks or sabihin nating uh, rock surface, uh, removed part of a rock surface that uh, carved using sharp objects. So in the Ono Pedro clips, they show human figures, frogs, and lizards along with the other designs. The engravings are mostly symbolized or, or representing uh, healing and magic. This site, uh, this site is declared by the National Museum of the Philippines as a natural cultural treasure in the year 1973. Then the last one is the shell bracelets and pendants. Shells were used as a tool or ginagamit ito ng ating mga ancestors sa mga baybaying lugar or mga isla na malimit lang yung mga bato. Also, ginagamit din nila yung shells as ornaments or accessories. So the oldest known ornaments made from the cone of shell were found in early 1960s in the grave of an adult male in Doyong Cave in Palawan. So, it is the evidence na hindi lang ginagamit yung uh, shells or ginagamit, lang, ginagamit din nila to as a weapon and also for decoration. We also have the important artworks during this uh, period. So the first one is the Lingling O. Lingling O dated about 2000 BC to 1000 AD. One of the finest jade ornament found is a pendant recovered from Palawan. So it is an example of the superb grand pan shape of Asian carving in jade. So from a solid uh, jade mineral, our ancestors uh, use it as an accessory or pendant called Lingling A. So, sa Lingling A, ginagamit nila to as decoration or sabihin natin palumuti sa katawan nila. Karaniwan ng mga ito 
ay galing sa mga jade mineral. Then, uh, kadalasan meron silang mga sharp o head or tatlong heads o mga pendants. Then, the second one is the manunggol jar. So, manunggol jar is a burial jar from Neolithic burial site in Manunggol Cave in Tabon, in Tabon dated about 890 to 7, uh, 10 BC. So when we say Neolithic, it is a period or sabi natin final division of Stone Age bago tayo lumipat ng panibagong uh, period or uh, era. So early Filipinos believe that uh, ginagamit din daw nila to o ginagamit nila to bilang himlayan ng ating mga yumaong ninuno. Ito yung ginagawa nilang kabaong before. So, early Filipinos believe that the human is composed of a body called ginhawa, yung physical na katawa nila. Then, their soul is called kaluluwa. So, nahati daw yung katawa natin sa ginhawa and kaluluwa. They also believe that mayroong afterlife na mayroon pa ding buhay pagkatapos mamatay ng kanilang physical na katawan or ng kanilang ginhawa. Sila din ay naniniwala na pag namatay ang tao, mapupunta ang kaluluwa nila sa kalikasan, kabundukan o kadubigan at magsisilbing gabay sa mga ibang tao at mga mahal nila sa buhay. Kung mapapansin natin ang disenyo ng manunggol jar, may kita natin sa bunga nga nito or sa takip nito ang kakaibang disenyo. So, yung disenyo may kita natin, the first one, ay kung may, kita, may makikita tayong dalawang tao dito sa bunganga or sa takip ng manunggol jar. So, the first one is the fatal position and then the other one who is holding a sagwan or paddle. So, the one with the fatal position is the kaluluwa or yung Kaluluwa daw, o nagrebasan ng kaluluwa nung nakalagay na bangkay dun sa loob ng manunggol jar. Then, yung nasa likod naman ng kaluluwa ay tinatawag nating abay. Abay ang maghahatid sa kaluluwa patungo sa panibagong buhay. Aside from manunggol jar, meron din tayong maitong jar. So, from Metal Age, from 19... Uh, 190 BC to 500 AD. So, maitong germ was, was discovered by the National Museum team in Ayong Cave in Sarangani Province. This is also a burial jar found in Sarangani Province. So, unlike manunggul jar, small bones and skulls lang ang nilalagay sa loob ng maitong jar. Dahil maliit nga din yung construction nung, or sabihin natin, maliit lang yung maitong jar. The design of maitong jar is composed of the base with small arms and legs. Then yung lid or yung takip nito ay may hugis ulo ng tao na may disenyo ng masayang muka at malungkot na muka. Maari daw na ito ay nag-represent or nag-symbolize ng personality or estado ng buhay ng mga bangkay or mga buto na nasa loob ng maitong jar. So aside from this important artworks, we also have the traditional and uh, other artworks in pre-colonial period. So, in pre-colonial, traditional art has a religious symbol, everyday activities such as fishing, farming, and specific decorative art pattern to the community. So, it is either the influence of local religion or Islamic faiths. So, fishing and farming is the everyday activities. Ito yung karaniwang may kita sa mga designs ng petroglyphs or yung mga carving sa mga uh, kweba. At, mag, at nagsalin-salin din ng kwento o mga pani, pani, paniniwala ng kultura ng ating mga ninuto, ninuno. Some are influenced by local religion. Pag sinabi natin local religion, ito yung mga religion na sumasamba sila sa mga anito, yung mao nilang ninuno, bundok, talon at iba pang bagay sa kalikasan. Also, we have our own literary art called Baybayin. So, Baybayin is derived from the Brahmic script of India 
first recorded in 16th century. So the term by Bayan means to write or to spell. So it is widely used in Luzon and other parts of the Philippines during uh, 16th to 17th century, before the period of Spanish colonization. So it continued to be used during the Spanish colonization in the Philippines until the 19th century. So these are the artworks, art products, materials of a uh, pre-colonial period. So aside from, uh, mayroon pa tayong tinatawag na pottery o paggawa ng mga banga o mga lutuan. We also have weaving, paggahabi ng iba't ibang kasuotan. We also have tattoo o pagbabatok, jewelry using seashells, pearls, bronze, and gold. We also have carving of anitos and their daily living tools. We also have metal crafts as their weapon and protection also used as accessories. So from traditional and uh, ethnic art, let's proceed to another era. So the Spanish colonial period. So from 1521 uh, to 1898. So almost 300 years daw tayo sinakop ng mga Spaniards. So Spanish colonial art was introduced formal painting, sculpture, architecture, which was inspired by the Gothic, Baroque, and Rococo art style. We learned the formal painting, uh, realistic techniques of sculpture, and our architectural structure with proper measurement and aesthetic from this period. Also, artworks in the Philippines is decorated even with Spanish influences. So most of our decoration in this period or era is become colorful or parang festive ang dating ng mga kagamitan natin sa bahay or kagamitan natin na ginagamit or artworks na, uh, from this era. So these are the art, uh, Spanish art aesthetic as adopted by Filipino artists. So the first one is Baroque aesthetic. So Baroque is the period of artistic style that use motion and clear easily uh, detail to produce drama, tension in sculpture, painting, architecture, literature, dance, theater, and music. So we can say na art became the medium of Catholicism or Christianity because we are so much attracted with their church structure, pleasing image of the patro uh, patrons or saints or mga santo, the realistic sculpture of Jesus. Then, we are also attracted with the beautiful harmonization of their religious music or church music. Aside from this, we also have Rococo art style and Gothic art, uh, art style. Rococo art style originated in early 18th century in Paris. So it's characterized by curvy lines and elaborated decorative styles of art. Rococo derived from the French word rocaille, means rock work or formation of seashells. So yung design daw ng Rococo art style ay para daw seashells. Also, we also have Gothic, typically rooted in religious devotion. So Filipino adopted this kind of designs and karamihan daw ng mga disenyo ng mga bahay during this Spanish period ay may mga gantong engravings sa mga pinto, haligi ng bahay, maging ang mga lamesa at upuan, at iba pang kagamitan na gawa sa kahoy ay katulad ng mga gantong disenyo, like aparador at mga hagdan. Also, from this period, we also have uprising Filipino artists during Spanish era. So in the formation of the elite Filipino class, the Ilustrado paved way for the rich locals to study abroad. In that case, more academic and Western approach has been learned. Karamihan ng mga mayayamang pamilya sa Pilipinas ay nagkaroon ng access upang makapag-aral sa ibang bansa at magkaroon ng formal na pag-aaral sa iba't ibang larangan ng sine. Ilan sa mga kilalang Filipino artist ay sina? Damian Domingo. Damian Domingo 
He is known as the father of Filipino painting and founder of Academia de Dibujo y Pintura, the first uh, school of drawing in the Philippines in 1821. He began his career as a painter specializing in miniature portraits of religious image. He is also one of the known artists of decorative art illustrations, Tipos del Pais, a watercolor painting of local costumes. His famous paintings are his self-portrait. He is also considered as the uh, first Filipino who has a self-portrait. And ilan sa mga kilalang paintings niya ay Nuestra Señora del San, uh, Santísimo Rosario. The other one is Portrait of Don Jose Maria, uh, Maria Peñaranda. We also have Juan Luna. Juan Luna E. Uh, Nobisho was a Filipino painter, sculptor, a political activist of the Philippine Revolution during late 19th century. He became one of the most recognized Filipino artists also because of his brother Antonio Luna or General Antonio Luna. His Polarium won a gold medal in 1888 in Madrid Exposition of Fine Arts. So ilan sa mga kilalang uh, paintings ni Juan Luna ay ang Spolarium, The Death of Cleopatra, and Tampuhan na nagpapakita ng ating kultura. Then the last one is Felix Resurrection Hidalgo, one of the greatest painter along with uh, Juan Luna in 19th century. Several paintings of Hidalgo rank among the most expensive paintings in the Philippine art ever sold in auction in 2016. His famous painting, La Pintura, was sold for a record of 78.2 million pesos at Salcedo Auction in the Philippines, becoming the most expensive artwork sold by artists internationally. So, si Felix Hidalgo din daw, ang may record na isa sa pinakamahal na paintings internationally. Aside from the artists, we also have two Filipino art style developed during Spanish era. So the first one is miniaturismo. So these portraits, mostly for women, were uh, called miniaturismo. In this art style, uh, they, paid way atten uh, they pay attention to the embroidery and texture of the costume. Aside from portrait na makikita natin, binibigyan nila ng attention or much detail yung mga costumes or yung embroidery and texture of or texture of the costume. Also, in this art style, it shows the person in a serious motive and outlook while holding an object that talks about his or her power or status of living. So, nagpapakinta rin dito ito ng mga object na nag-represent dun sa mga tao na ito daw yung nag-represent ng kanilang power or status of living. Then, the last one, we have letras y figuras. Spanish for letters and figures. It's a genre of painting pioneered by Jose Lozano during the Spanish colonial period in the Philippines. So letras y figuras art style uses letters with figures in everyday activities, a common background, or usually uh, used in painting patron's name. So kadalasan daw ginagamit daw to sa pagusulat ng mga pangalan ng mga patron. Also, in letras y figuras art style, the art form is distinguished by the depiction of letters of the alphabet using the genre of painting that contoured shapes of human figures, animals, plants, and other objects. So they use this figure, or yung pangalan nila, nag-represent yung mga, yung mga figures na ginagamit ay pwede nag-represent sa personality or characteristic or pagkakilanlan ng isang tao or isang lugar. So ito yung mga ilan sa mga examples ng figures na ginagamit sa letras i-figuras. So, ginagamit nila to 
uh, bilang classification din or pagkakilanla ng isang tao or isang lugar. Next. So, are we all clear, Dr. Pilarians? So, kung wala nang tanong, let's proceed to our activity. So, kung wala nang question, can you please uh, send a, a thumbs up or heart reaction to our live? So, we can proceed to our activity. So, let's have a short recap. So, so, I'm going to read the questions. Then, uh, you must comment your answers in the comment section. So, let's start. Number one. Who is known as the uh, father of Filipino paintings? He is also the first Filipino to paint his face or portrait. Letter A, Juan Luna. Letter B, Felix Hidalgo. Letter C, Jose Rizal. Letter D, Damian Domingo. So let's read the comments. From, uh, from Ira uh, Constantino, her answer is letter D, Damian Domingo. So the right answer is letter D. Very good. Next question. An art showing a person in a serious motive and outlook while holding an object that talks about his or her power and status of living. Letter A, miniaturismo. Letter B, baroque. Letter C, Spanish era. Letter D, contemporary. So, hintayin natin yung sagot ng ating mga students. So, from Niana, there is, her answer is letter A, miniaturismo. Oh, very good. That's the right answer. Number three question. Which of the following is known as uh, pre-colonial art? Letter A, carving. Letter B, miniaturismo. Letter C, letras y figuras. Or letter D, theater. So which of the following is known as pre-colonial art. Letter A, carving. Letter B, miniaturismo. Letter C, letras y figuras. Letter D, theater. So from Jemril Marcelino, his or uh, her answer is letter A. Tignan natin kung tama. Okay, correct. So the right answer is carving. Next number. Also from Mia Rafael. Her answer is letter A. Very good. Question number four. Which of the following is not a characteristic of pre-colonial art? Letter A, religious symbols. Letter B, animalistic. Letter C, baroque. Letter D, traders' influences. So from Sheena, Francisco, her answer is letter C. So the right answer is letter C. Very good. Also from Stephen Marcelino, his or her answer is letter C. Then last question. This art form is distinguished by the depiction of letters of the alphabet using the genre of painting that contoured shapes of human figures, animals, and other objects. So the choices are letter A, carving, letter B, miniaturismo, letter C, 
letras y figuras. Letter D, molding. So an art, an art style that use uh, genres of painting that contour shapes of human figures, animals, plants, and other objects. So from Lucia Rosario, her answer is letter C. Also from Nova Teresa, her answer is also letter C. So the right answer is letter C, letras y figuras art style. Okay. So thank you, uh, Del Pilarians, for your cooperation for our activity. So let's proceed to our assessment or assignment. So using letras y figuras art style, the form of letters and figures of the alphabet, uh, uh, alphabets using shapes of human figures, animals, plants, and other objects, write and draw the letters of your first or given name in Oslo paper or uh, any kind of paper. So ang gagawin niyo, isusulat niyo yung pangalan niyo, then lalagyan lalagyan niyo ng letras at figuras art style, art style. So ang ilalagay niyo figures can be uh, one of your characteristic, can be associated with your personality or things na kilala kayo. Or masabi natin na uh, uh, hobbies or part ng personality niyo. So for example, ang pangalan mo ay Bea, or sabihin natin Mark Francis, so dalawa yung gagawin mong pangalan, then associate mo yung personality or characteristic mo using letras, ipiguras art style. So maliwanag ang ating assignment. Also, you can use any coloring materials na available or mayroon kayo. Okay, thank you very much, Del Pilarians. So to conclude, we would like to thank every students, teachers, and administrators who have been part of what makes Marcelo, uh, Tele Radio Marcelo became successful, Tele Aralan. So once again, I'm Sir J.D. Perez, your CIPAR teacher for today. May you continue to bring the best in you and aspire other to your works. Goodbye and thank you very much. Maraming salamat. at your service. Kaya naman, ang feedback mo, suggestions nyo ay mahalaga sa amin to improve our programs on air and online. Para alam ni teacher yung strengths as well as the things in your mind na mas makatutulong sa mas effective na pagkatuto sa Teleradio. Please take time to send your feedbacks via Teleradio Mu, which you can access by scanning the QR code on the right or typing the URL provided here bit.ly slash 3 o r v a y 9 One more this time you follow bit.ly slash 3 o r v a y 9 Kaya send your hashtag tbh o hashtag rt dito sa Teleradio Mu Kung saan ang feedback mo, suggestions nyo, ay mahalaga sa Teleradio. Makinig, manood na sa Teleradio. Makinig, manood na sa Teleradio. Teleradio, Teleradio Marcelo. 
sa gitna ng mapanubok na panahon Magkahatid sa gagkakibat ay diskusyon Sama-sama tayo Kahit magkalayo Sa programang ito Tiyak ang pagkatuto Teleradyo Teleradyo Marcelo Teleradyo Teleradyo Marcelo Teleradyo Teleradyo Marcelo